As I switched video editing programs from Blender to Sony Vegas, one thing became apparent immediately. The videos I was uploading to YouTube ended up looking way worse in Sony Vegas than they did in Blender. To me this was completely unacceptable that a professional level video editor wasn't able to reach the same quality as an open source program. So I sat out on a journey across the internet, navigating numerous forum threads in a sea of misguided YouTube videos before I reached three viable solutions. And I'm going to share all of them with you right now, starting with the simplest, least effective one, editing with the one that's best, and just a little bit harder. Before going any further, I'd like to point to the advanced encoding settings that were put forward by Google as guidelines for reaching the optimal quality in your uploaded YouTube videos. This guide will mostly focus on matching up these suggested settings. If you'd like to know more about them, head to this URL up here, or click the link in the description. Before talking about render presets and output settings, let's take a look at the properties page of your project media. If you're working on game videos like myself, you don't want your pixel format set to 32-bit floating point full range. You want to set it to either 8-bit or 32-bit floating point video levels. Doing so removes the excess saturation from the video and makes it look so much better for everyone else. The first and simplest, and consequently least effective method, is using the built-in main concept renderer that comes with Sony Vegas. To do this, simply access the main concept renderer in the render settings, and select any one of these, and make the match up to this template I'm about to show. So what I have here is a 1080p um, resolution. I have a high profile, I have 30 frames per second, and I have field order to non-progressive scan. The number of reference frames is set to 3 because that is the number that YouTube uses and the constant bitrate is set to 50 million. This is how my audio looks, this is what my sound card supports. Uh, my system supports OpenCL, this is set over here. That doesn't affect the quality, it affects the speed at which you render. And my project settings are set to best, use project settings for stereoscopic and my color space is default. As you can see there's not too much to set. The second method is slightly more difficult than the first but conversely brings about better results. To take advantage of this you need to download X264 VFW. Uh, now make sure you get the right version meaning the regular one if you're on 32-bit and the 64 one if you're on a 64-bit system. Once you get this and download it and install it, you can head to Vegas, File, Render, and then head down to Video for Windows, which is what that VFW was, and select any one of these and match it up to this preset, which you th then should save. Um, alternately, you can download the preset pack from the link in the description and save yourself this time. It will come already done. All you have to do is extract. Anyway, over here you set the frame size to the size of your video, set the frame rate to 30 because that's what YouTube supports, none for the field order, one for the pixel aspect. On video format is where you will choose X264 VFW. Then you have to configure and you type in this goodness right here. I'll have it in the description so you can just copy and paste. For the other settings, you set the profile to high, the level to 4.2, you want to convert it to YUV 4.2 uh, zero. You want to have zero latency and this is very important or your audio will lag and for the average bitrate you want to set it to 50,000. The reason I'm using 50,000 is because that was the suggested YouTube uh, setting for enterprise quality connections. You can take a look and set yours to the appropriate suggestion. Once we do this we hit OK, we hit OK and we're ready to render. Now the third and best method is somewhat more difficult to configure but once you've got it set up it's quite easy to use. And the advantage of it is it'll allow you to match up your export media one for one with the advanced encoding settings provided by Google. Now the first thing you're going to need is the debug mode frame server. It's a free software you go ahead and grab the appropriate version for uh, your system and keep in mind that this works with Adobe Premiere as well as some other programs so this guide is more or less interchangeable with them. The next thing you need is MEGUI so just go ahead and download that, open it up and extract it to a folder. And the next thing you need after that is the Nero AAC codec and this is going to allow you to match up your 
audio one for one with the advanced encoding settings provided by YouTube. So once you've gone ahead and downloaded the Neuro AAC codec, you're going to want to head to MEGUI, Tools, EAC3TO folder, and extract the Win32 executables from Neuro AAC over here. Then head back to MEGUI, open it up, and head to the Options, Settings, External Program Configuration, and check Enable Neuro AAC, and point it to the appropriate EXC. Hit Save. Then head to File, Import Presets, and import the presets that you've downloaded from the video description and the link I provided. All right, this is going to give you two already set profiles for for Nero and for uh, and for H.264. And I'm going to go ahead and guide you through them real quick. So what we have here is 50,000 bitrate, ABR, medium, highest profile, 4.2 AVC level, no tuning. Under advanced settings, we're using zero latency. I did not change this page, and I did not change this page. On this page, I enabled CABAC, I set the GOP size to 15, I set the reference frames to 3. These match up one for one with the settings that are provided by uh, Google. On the audio encoder side, this is how this looks. Once again, you can import these presets. Now I'm going to ahead and uh, close this, and then we'll see how it looks when you're doing this from the start from Vegas with your project media. Now that we've got that all configured, let's head to File, Render As, and select the project default of the debug mode frame server. You don't get anything to change here, so just press Render. Set your video output to match up these settings with RGB32 and write audio as PCM samples check. Press Next. Head over to MEGUI and open it up. Once that's up, you're going to head to Tools, AVS Script Creator. Under Video Input, you're going to select the new file that you're rendering, that you're serving. Under Config, you're going to use this uh, profile. You may not need to use it, so if your project media is already set to 30 FPS, you don't need to change the frames per second. And furthermore, it doesn't really matter as far as I can tell for YouTube whether you set it at 60 or 30. It has a way to deal with it that doesn't degrade quality. But for the purposes of a smaller file size and a faster render time, we're going to set this to uh, change FPS 30 and convert to VIV 12. Um, and we're going to uncheck resize, although I don't think that makes a difference and we press save. Now just close this preview window and uh, head over to here. We're going to go ahead and select audio input. We're going to use the same render uh, AVI. Once that's done, ensure that the encoder settings are set to the HUTube 264 and the HUTube Neuro for the audio encoder settings. Hit auto encode, select no target size and set your um, output file name and path. And that's all. When I was making this guide, I spent quite a bit of time rendering the same video in different outputs and then uploading it to YouTube and then seeing how it looks. One thing I noticed when I was doing that is that when I was making videos with MEGY or X264, they would always have the same thumbnail. And that's quite important because it indicates that YouTube was treating both of these uh, videos in the same way and then re-rendering them in the same way. However, the main concept render, as well as other renderers, would net a different thumbnail, which means to me that they were being rendered in a slightly different way, perhaps slower, just perhaps differently. But the main point being is you get higher quality using the MEGUI or X264 
over the main concept render that comes built in. And this quality matches up exactly with what YouTube asks, and their process works very well together with it, giving you the best quality possible. So just stick to my guide and stick to the advanced encoding settings provided by YouTube, and you'll have the best quality you could possibly have.